Hello students, uh, in this video I will explain about sockets which is one of the inter-process communication mechanism. In the previous videos we discussed about uh, semaphores, message queues and shared memory. So socket is uh, something which is different where two process which is remotely uh, available and which is connected through a pro uh, network. Uh, if these two process wants to communicate with each other then it, it can use sockets. Whereas the other uh, other process are residing in the same system or uh, which have it from different users maybe it wants to communicate it can use the previous mechanisms but socket is used to for inter-process communication between two processes through the network. So to provide uh, common methods for inter-process communication and to allow use of sophisticated network protocols the BSD system uh, that is Berkeley socket system that is uh, provides a mechanism known as sockets. So the Berkeley sockets for uh, this it is also called as Berkeley sockets allow communication between host or between process on computer using the concept of an internet socket. So if two process which are remotely available if these two process wants to communicate with each other through the network connection then sockets are used. So here socket has uh, if a socket program is uh, followed like this a client program and the client process and the server process if these two process wants to communicate it is going through such layers that is a socket layer protocol layer and device layer. So device layer is the uh, ethernet layer uh, so where uh, each and every system will have this ethernet driver uh, through that uh, the local host uh, through that address uh, this particular uh, process can be connected in the network and then uh, the protocol layer where we have TCP and IP internet protocol and uh, transfer control protocol uh, so these um, uh, protocols will be there uh, through that we are accessing this particular uh, process so two process if two process wants to communicate it can communicate through these layers socket layer protocol layer and uh, device layer so the kernel structure consists of three parts the socket layer protocol layer and device layer as we did, as we saw and uh, through that it has to uh, communicate with each other so let's see one scenario uh, with that scenario i think it will be uh, easily understandable the socket will be easily understandable then we'll discuss what are the different uh, system calls available uh, for each and every scenarios so let's see uh, we have a person a uh, maybe he is the receiver and person B is a caller. So let's uh, assume that person A wants to uh, person A and person B wants to communicate with each other. So uh, maybe the person B wants to be the caller and person A should be the receiver. So person B wants to receive uh, wants to uh, send some information to person A and then process A and B both are communicating with each other. So uh, in order to in order to uh, perform this kind of operation so two person has to communicate with each other so through a medium they they both can communicate with each other so what is the medium so the here as per this example we are using a medium called telephone so if person b wants to call person a both ha needs to have installed a telephone so person a should have installed a telephone person b should have installed a telephone and then uh, person a person a should have a phone number so so that with that particular number person b can call the particular person so both person a and person b they both can have a phone number so that person b can call the person a so person b may not necessarily to have a phone number but person a should have a phone number because person a is a receiver and person b is the caller then uh, whenever person b is trying to call this particular person then person A should have turned on the ringer to listen for a caller. So if the ringer is off that means uh, the person A will not be notified about the call so he may miss that call. So in order to avoid that person A should turn on the ringer that means he is, he is awaiting for a call. He is uh, listening to a call uh, maybe uh, some call he might uh, get so that he is uh, listening for the call so that is what turning on ringer to listen for a caller and person b if it if he wants to initiate the communication then he has to lift the telephone and dials a number so this is uh, one of the initial steps where through how he can uh, initiate the communication so lift the telephone and dials a number and uh, once he dials the number the connection will be established and the telephone rings and the receiver picks uh, receiver picks it up so here because he is listening to the telephone 
and the telephone rings and it is notifying the person A <coughs> and then the person A is picking up the uh, receiver and he is attending the call. So once the connection is established, these both the users can uh, talk and exchange the data. So, so that's how it is performing. After the conversation is uh, entered, uh, the person A as well as person B both can hung up the phone. So this is how a normal telephone uh, conversation will happen. And uh, this scenario is very much uh, similar to our socket scenario. So let's see how the socket is working and what are the system calls we need uh, for such operation. So here also we are going to have the same kind of thing that is one person is the person caller is the client and the person who is the receiver he is a server. So if a server and client wants to communicate with each other so assume that this client is trying to establish a connection with the server. So for that uh, initially the client should uh, install a socket that means set up an endpoint communication. So in this process in this client process socket has to be installed. Uh, in the server process also the client the socket has to be installed so both ends we have to install the sockets uh, the socket system call should be executed so that uh, both process uh, can is eligible to communicate with each other through socket after that uh, we have to assign the address so assigning address to the receiver if this process is going to listen for any connection any incoming connection then it is must for this process to have the bind system call so bind system call means binding this particular process uh, with this particular socket with the uh, phone number so that is called bind system call so as an address to an endpoint and this uh, client is not necessary uh, for to have a bind system call because this is just going to call it so, but it is not uh, wrong if, if this process is also having a bind system call so bind system call is used to assign the phone number or uh, it is going to be assigned binded with the phone number so through that number this particular process can call this uh, pro server so then uh, server uh, that is a receiver is going to listen for the process listen for any incoming connection so that is through uh, listen system call so listen system call will always wait for any incoming connection it is looking for the connection if there is any connection then it is going to accept the connection so initiate the connection so we saw that uh, the lifts up the telephone and dials a number uh, the, here the client is going to uh, execute a system call that is connect so connect system call is used to connect or trying to attempt to connect to the server so whenever this ad, ad connect information connect system call is executed so that uh, information parameters will be passed to this uh, person a or the server and server will be notified so it will have the ringer if it is if because it is listening it will be notified for the incoming connection then this uh, it has to accept this connection accept this connection means picking up the phone and uh, attending that particular phone call so once it is accepted both the server and client can use send and receive system calls to uh, communicate with each other. So it can both it is uh, just uh, duplex uh, communication. So where both uh, both both server and client can interact with each other at the same time. And then uh, once the communication is done, communication is over. Uh, both system calls can both uh, server and client can execute the closed system call to close or hung up the connection. So this is how these are the scenarios and this uh, these are the system calls we are going to see for all these uh, client server connection uh, using sockets. So we'll see what are the sockets, what are the system calls and what are the parameters we are using for the system calls. So first one is a socket system call uh, which is used by both server and the client and it is used to establish the endpoint of a communication link. So the system call uh, syntax is sd is equal to socket. Uh, format of the socket and type of the socket and the protocol. So here the format specifies a communication domain uh, whether it is Unix system or internet domain in which domain it is available. If it is a local host we can specify it as local host. If it is from other protocol we have to specify the protocol. Mm, if it is uh, what is the type of the communication uh, over the socket virtual circuit or the datagram that has to be specified in the type and then the protocol to continue uh, control the communication whether it is TCP IP. Uh, so what is the uh, through which protocol we are going to communicate. So the number has to be specified here. Now after successful execution of this socket system call we will get a socket descriptor. So through that socket descriptor we are going to access this particular socket. So process use this in other system calls. So only for the first time installing the phone or installing the sockets we are using this socket system call after that every time we are going to use this socket descriptors. And then we are having a bind system call. 
So bind system call we know it is uh, used by the server and it associated with the uh, associates an ad address with the socket descriptor which includes a port number and IP address. Uh, so we know it is uh, bind system call is just like a telephone number uh, through that number we can call the server. So it is associated with a port number and IP address. So the system call syntax goes like this bind of SD. SD is a socket which was created uh, with, uh, by the socket system call and address uh, points to the structure that specifies an identifier specific to the communication domain and protocol specified in the socket system call and we have the length uh, length of the address structure so what is the length of the address structure that will be specified in the bind system call so the client does not have to bind system assigns a dynamic port number so client will not be using this bind system call rather it will be dynamically uh, allotted a port number because here it is just going to call the server. So client server should have this bind system call and client does not need to have this bind system call. Then listen system call, this once again it is for the server. The server listens to the connection, uh, connection request and the queue the incoming request until it can service them. So uh, it is going to listen for the connection, maybe it is going to get more than one connection. So it is going to queue them and it is going to service each and every connection one by one. So it is going to attend the call one by one. So uh, it is just like one call is already there, so the other call is on the waiting. So here uh, the server is going to be listening and uh, listen system call is uh, like listen SD. SD is a system is a socket descriptor written with a socket system call and queue length like maximum number of outstanding queues. So through this, uh, this uh, server will be listening for uh, uh, any incoming uh, calls or any incoming connection. Then this is also this connect system call is also belongs to the server uh, where it is going to accept the connection once the server once the server is free to accept any call or any connection then uh, it is going to execute this connect system call uh, through this socket descriptor address and the length. So here socket descriptor address and length will be specified uh, and then once it is accepted once this successful execution of this connect system call both server and the client are connected. If both server and client are connected, then these two processes can communicate with each other through um, some uh, accept system through the message, sorry, send system call and receive system call. So here uh, accept system call is the next system call used by the server to accept the incoming connections. Um, uh, sorry, here this connect system call is used by the client to connect the system, system and accept system call is used by the server once it is accepted the two process can accept uh, two process can start communication so it can use the message uh, send and receive system call to uh, communicate with each other and then finally the send system call it is count is equal to send of sd comma message comma length comma uh, flags so that will be used uh, for uh, sharing uh, uh, some message to the client and the server and then and the receive system calls the receive system calls is used uh, to receive any message uh, from uh, the client or the server so both process can use the either both the client and then and then the server can use this um, receive as well as a send system call receive and send system call used to come used for the communication after that once uh, the communication is done it can shut down the connection or it can close the socket so it can either it can shut down shut down means and completely removing this um, uh, from your memory or from the uh, two process or uh, completely shut, shutting down this particular socket or otherwise if it wants to just disconnect it can use closed system call so shutdown is sd comma mode so mode indicates whether sending side the receiving side or both sides no longer allow transmission that is shutdown and closed system call closed system call closes the sockets and frees the socket descriptor so, the, so that the frog socket descriptor may be used by some other process and uh, get sock name so in case if we if we if we doesn't know the uh, socket name so we have to get the socket name that can be done by using get sock name system call so these are the different um, algorithms or different system calls we are going to use for uh, socket connection so once again if you uh, learn by using this scenario then it is easily understandable so initializing socket on both installing sockets on both ends uh, bind system call on the server and the server is listening for the connection uh, client is sending the connect request once the connection is accepted send and receive system calls are used to communicate used to communicate between this process finally uh, it is closing the connection 
uh, after the communication is over. So these are the different types of inter-process communication. So socket is one of the inter-process communication which is uh, done between different networks. Thank you.